Hi, welcome to newwine.org, nu-wine.org, a thought revolution one heart at a time. I really appreciate you giving this podcast a chance, and I hope to shed some light on a topic, perhaps from a different point of view you've not heard yet. I'd love to know your thoughts. Enjoy. Hi, thanks for uh, wanting to check out this podcast. Welcome to New Wine. used to be called Panda Tribe, but we changed the name. We sure did. All right. So, I um, wanted to talk today about some very deep topics that I would consider peripheral speculation. Um, these are just the kind of things that I think about, and if you enjoy it, uh, let me know. So, I'm going to start off with this. This is a quote taken from Nassim Haramin, and it regards uh, his uh, proposal um, that a singularity, a uh, black hole, at a quantum level exists in our being, in our heart. And it goes like this. There is a physical place inside your heart that has a singularity. A singularity is like a, can be a wormhole. Your heart has a little cavity between the two vent, uh, ventricles. Uh, and that little cavity has the highest electromagnetic field of your body and can be measured up to eight feet away from you. And that's the battery of life that keeps your heart going. When you die, that singularity is no longer present. And I think, this is Mr. Harmin, that that is why there is a bunch of weight that goes missing when people die. The weight is the result of that singularity missing space-time, creating a gravitational effect that we call weight. So essentially, when you die, what he's saying is a, um, a singularity is created, a wormhole, and, and so the quantum energy, your soul, your spirit, <clears throat> it, um, it, it vortexes, according to what he describes all the time, into that wormhole. All right. My question is, is why? Why does it do that? This is my proposal. So point, let's see here. Um, how many seconds was it? It was point zero. Let's see here. Six zeros, one seconds after the big, big bang quark gluon plasma, uh, was, was there. Quark gluon plasma is essentially the building blocks of, from what I've read and understand so far of black holes. There are small black holes. It was a pool, I guess, uh, superfluidity of, of that stuff. Um, all right. So essentially the portal of this stuff created, came into the Big Bang and created what we have now. And I believe that this has been an eternal process and therefore, we have a multiverse of these big bangs. That's where I'm going with that. Point being is that black holes, I think, are an intrinsic function of the multiverse. They go one way um, and you can't come back. And then, um, yeah. So, um, and in this case, the, the quantum energy, the soul, spirit, will go one way into the singularity in the heart. And what happens? How did all this happen? So I believe this, um, I'm going to quote another guy here. Um, uh, his name was, uh, Mitra. Um, just talking about gluons a little bit here. Thus the scenario considered in our paper in no way denies that mathematically the final state of continued gravitational collapse is a black hole. Mitra told nature India, the researchers further show that, um, black hole candidates are actually extremely hot balls of exotic quark gluon plasma, a molten state of neutrons and protons when they break down at the, at the atomic level. And essentially, um, one more thing I, I, um, this, I'm just going to talk some about black holes. Um, I saw another, uh, I saw a podcast with, I think his name is Brian Cox and he was talking with, uh, of all people, Joe Rogan. Yes. I like that show. Um, 
It's very interesting. Um, but essentially, um, what they described was if you have one cubic centimeter of, of quark gluon plasma, it would weigh 40 million tons. When you have such a, a mass, you're going to bend space time. Um, and it, you know, that, if it's that small and it weighs that much, and then you increase it on the scale of a planet, a moon, a star, what's going to happen? You're going to create a black hole, right? So that's just tying into the, the, um, describing the big bang way back when and and just black holes in general and so to also to also say at that small level right that if there is a singularity that more than likely there are gluons there that hold together the neutrons and protons possibly in that area of the heart and that's where the soul possibly goes when it dies or it goes through we correct that it goes through it doesn't go to it goes through okay um so this is what I believe. I believe that when Adam was told that he would be like God by the Nakash, which I've talked about in another uh, podcast, look it up there on here on SoundCloud um, if you want, um, that he, um, he, 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 he had the uh, understanding of the, the distinction between what is functional and what is dysfunctional according to the basis of love. Haramin talks about that it seems like the universe, it's, it's built around love. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but there's a quote somewhere in there that I've posted a million times. Um, so, but the tree is not good and is not, is not necessarily the good and evil. It's a tr well, it is, but it's also, when you look at the words in Hebrew, it means functional and dysfunctional. And, and it has to be, well, on what basis? It's on the basis of unconditional agape love. This works. If I uh, don't steal from my brother or my sister, my neighbor, right? This works if I don't go and kill so and so, you murder. This this works if I don't lie and cheat and blah blah blah, right? So that's what's functional and what's dysfunctional. Okay, that is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and he partook of this knowledge, the distinction of it, and when he did that, um, his conscience. Uh, was a chief witness. It had co-knowledge and witnessed what he did. And when that happened, um, I believe that was when this singularity that Haramin talks about was actually created. Because prior to that, the corporeal flesh of Adam and his wife was not able to decay. He created corruption and decay in the universe because he handed over dominion uh, um, that he had because he was a type of Christ. Um, uh, if Adam is, is the first Adam and Christ is the last Adam, let's do an inversion. Adam is the t first Christ with the caveat of him not being able to redeem himself because otherwise he wouldn't have died physically. So point being, yes, he handed over the keys of the universe um, when he made that choice. Nor Fedrin flooded his body he realized he was naked um, and became um, and partook of corrupt, the corruption and eventually physical death. And then eventually when he died, you had to, something had to happen now to your, your soul too. And so what happened? I believe it went to a, um, a holding pattern. And, and the, the Jews call it um, Sheol. Um, it's translated as Hades and hell um, and death in some translations. Hades, I don't think, is an accurate translation. That is a Greek mythology term. It's Sheol. It's also called paradise in Abraham's bosom. Okay? So I think that that is... No, that is not what I think. That is what I believe was where Adam went. Uh, the question is, is, was there anybody else there when he got there? I believe there were. And that maybe that's another... Another podcast. So, uh, how in the world would Adam people be there if Adam was the first person? Mm. All right, um, let's go on. Sorry, tangent. Um, so yeah, so he created the the gluon nanoscale black hole uh, in that singularity in, in the heart, um, and then that's where when he was body died and his wife, they both go, went there, right? Um, 
because the purpose of anything has to be fulfilled and the purpose of death in that case <clears throat> that he um he created because he separated from life because jesus says i am the way the truth and the life right he separated himself from life and separation um, had to be separate in this holding pattern called shield abraham's bosom paradise so that is where I think he went. I believe he went. That's where Elijah and Moses went. Until Christ went into uh, Sheol and said, I am the Messiah. Um, and then the rest is history, right? They ascended on high. Okay. Um, the other part here that I think should be considered, let's go on a little bit more of the quantum mechanic stuff, um, is that I believe that when Jesus was born, that hit the zygote that eventually became fetus embryo, a little baby, right? Baby Jesus that that zygote was was fertilized by the spirit of god uh, fertilizing mary's egg okay and why is that significant it's significant because this zygote had to it says that all the fullness of the godhead dwelled in him bodily what does that mean i will make an attempt which is a feeble attempt and it's this all of the energy of the multiverse of zero point energy was put into the zygote that became one new man and that new man being christ this type of man was also created in adam and when adam made the decision the choice that he did he created a singularity um, in his in his being because he had all of the zero point energy in the multiverse so uh, that was what was forfeited um, when, when he made that decision. Um, and this zero-point energy raises the dead. I mean, I think it's God's energy. It raises the dead, uh, heals people, makes eyeballs grow and arms grow out. Uh, it, it parted the Red Sea, it created the universe, uh, brings things into being, uh, and so on, right? So that was what was forfeited. And if you look in Genesis, um, it says that he told Adam and his wife, he said, be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion over the earth. Then um, Noah comes, right? And, and he you know, built the ark, the flood came, and then he told Noah, be fruitful and multiply the earth. If you compare those two, they seem, like, they seem very similar in their verbiage. But, we, but you notice that the, the, the difference and the contrast is that he didn't tell Noah to have dominion. Why is that? Because it was forfeited. All right, so by Adam. Um, so yeah, so I think that Sheol, this place, had, has always existed because it says in the Word that Christ was, was crucified before the foundation of the earth and before time. And so it had to be there. And so um, that's that. So um, yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Um, but um, I don't know. I think that this is amazing. Um, there was no need to have a singularity in our heart uh, prior to this choice made by, by Adam. Because there was no need to, to, to use that singularity in that portal to go uh, to Sheol. This is just peripheral speculation. You know, um, it seems pretty interesting and just wanted to bounce it off of anybody who likes this kind of talk. I hope you like it. If you have any uh, comments, feedback, let me know. You can contact me at contact um, at new, nu-wine.org. Thanks.